Hello everyone, in this video, we will be discussing regarding the Hindu editorial page, some of the articles to be focused. Uh, today is August 5th, 2020. Uh, before I begin, I welcome you all to YFS Study Karo. I am Prashant. Let's get started. The first article is regarding the Ayodhya Ram Mandir construction, how the decision has been taken by the three panel members which were appointed by the Supreme Court in the earliest that is in 2019 uh, this article is penned by Sriram who is one of the appointee by the Supreme Court at the time so these views are personal according to him among many learnings about the nature of public disputes is an urgent need to create a center for moderating dialogue so on March 8th last year the Supreme Court appointed a three member med mediation committee to attempt uh, mediation in Ayodhya Babri Masjid a uh, Ram uh, Janma Bhumi dispute pending before the court uh, justice who is retired Ibrahim a former judge of the court uh, Sri Ravi Shankar and also Sri Ram uh, who were the three members then they immediately commenced the process of having meetings with many parties in the case together and separately so the initial time of two months was extended to August 15th 2019 which the court advanced to July 31st 2019 so the closure to the issue all the parties would not reach ag uh, agreement by that time and the court started hearing of the case on August 6th in the mid September at the request of some parties the court permitted resumption of mediation around the time of conclusion of arguments in the end of October so several parties submitted the agreements on the settlement formula that the views of the part, uh, parties be sought under the province, uh, provisions of the Code of Civil Procedure or the formula to be adopted uh, for the Board Order Article of 142 of the Constitution of India. The court delivered judgment in the case of November 9, 2019. So it adverted to the terms of settlement arrived in at the mediation process but expressed its inability to proceed with the same since all the parties did not have signed on it. So it gave a disputed land and adjoining parcels of the Hindu for building the Ram Mandir and allotted five acres elsewhere to the Muslims. So the judgment was bitterly resented and intellectually critici uh, criticized for favoring the Hindus. But there, are, there was also a relief that there was a closure uh, to this issue and that no more bloodshed took place. Importantly, the court uh, breathed constitutional protection of longevity of the protection of the uh, places of worship act that is 1991 which protects all other places of worship for all of all religions from conversion with this india will be uh, spared a uh, repeats of this mandir and masjid mayhem so the me uh, mediation dynamics certainly in the history of mediation this is the most momentous case uh, given in the context communities history of violence ancient archaeology and present ground realities the interplay between the law and logical and emotions and faith and what uh, the outcome aborted to the future of hundreds of millions of people so there are many many lessons to be learned from mediating Ayodhya some will remain un undisclosed owing to the confidentiality which covers the mediation proceedings others will emerge perhaps when the time is right and the manner is appropriate but uh, for in the uh, author's perspective the Indelible lesson is one concerning very basic nature of public disputes. Uh, to put simply and sometimes the most important thing can be stated very simply, when conflict starts there is a movement uh, towards each end of the spectrum, the periphery swells, stringent voices command attention, extreme demands are made and soon it is the combatant uh, ones within the combatant sites who calls the shots. So they benefit ideologically, politically and personally. The fashion, the litigation and the courts uh, give them the right to represent their communities. The moderates on the other hand behave moderately can be easily shouted down or shunted out. Pleading charges of being traitors, they toe the line. Leaving aside the mediation sessions about uh, which the author uh, nothing to hear, he also spoke to many people about the dispute before and after and apart from the mediation, overwhelming Overwhelmingly, they favored the middle grounds and accommodation compromise moving on, securing the each side which is the needed most 
recognizing the non-negotiable were different uh, when the author put it all together that he, they are left with inescapable feelings that if strong voices have pushed the modernization and dialogue of harmonious solutions, uh, there would have been a countervailing a centripetal moment cancelling out the centrifugal one. So and the following scenario would be not be unimaginable. So then and now, sometimes in 1980 a meeting is facilitated between the senior Shankar Aryas, the accepted representatives of Hindu faith and the president of all India Muslim Personal Law Board, uh, Mulana Ali, accompanied, accompanied by the head of the Waqf border and other leading Muslim uh, clerics. They are all under intense public pressure to find a solution if the religious men cannot hot head and politicians would have a uh, feel a day they are told. So in the atmosphere to re uh, respect and confidentiality, these holy men can talk freely and explore the multiple options for settlement. So sharing the contested space is desirable but if Hindus feel strongly about location or locating a large temp a Ram temple, the Muslims uh, must hear an apology for the wrongful act of sneaking an ideal into the mosque in 1949. And if the language is not given up or giving in uh, but to please uh, give to the brother with the greater need since he fervently believes that this is the birthplace of the Lord, the response is likely to be commensurate. So Maulana Ali is scholarly and wise and can give his people a crucial piece of advice. Uh, do not treat his uh, this as an ordinary masjid versus mandir dispute. A Lord Ram for the Hindus is like Allah for us. So we may win legal battles but we will not win Noah here. Give it to them generously and we will be the winners but on one condition this must uh, be no precedent. Also when we really fear is that this is a prelude to other demands when the conveyed to Hindus there is a response can be uh, clear. So you need to be have fear of the Lord, for fear of for the rest. In Kashi and Mathura no doubt the old temples were destroyed by Muslim invaders but we have built a new ones where worship is happening for many years and we do not want uh, to change that. Ayodhya is different because we do not, uh, do not have a temple for Rome. We will prevail on the government to bring in the law to protect all other places of the worship. Let this country be free in of this spectre of breaking houses in, of religion. So uh, choose any parcel of the land and it will be yours to build a new mosque and the measures of goodwill and other mosques in Ayodhya can be repaired and renovated. So how much better it would be uh, if, have been my countrymen if this had been a reality but learning the lessons for the future it can be if both if there is both targeted actions on the ground swell each finding into another which creates a monument of movement uh, towards the middle platform where both sides can meet to resolve public disputes. An urgent need for our time is to create the center for moderating dialogue. May it come uh, about soon, it will be a sacred space which the great poet uh, Jalal Ad Rumi spoke about. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoings and right doings, there is a field I will meet you there. So this is regarding the Ayodhya dispute and how it had been taken into action and some of the interventions and how the things have went in the past till date. The next article is regarding the H-1B visa how again the Trump is signing order against the hiring H-1B visa holders. Donald Trump is again resorting to hateful troops about immigrants stealing the jobs. The list of US President Donald Trump attacks on the inflow of skilled foreign workers into the country continues to exp expand rapidly within the last salvo from the White House seeking to potentially prevent such workers from participating in any federal government contracts indefinitely. The executive order signed by Mr. Trump specifically targets the H-1B visa as one that purportedly results in the loss of jobs to US persons owing to the chief foreign labor. Indian nationals tend to be granted around 60 to 70 percent of more of the visas in this category annually, which implies that the potential impact of this order on IT and ITES firms based in India could be considerable and procedured and produce a ripple effect in the bilateral economic space. 
notwithstanding the sense of a shock that uh, this is order is likely to cause among those in corporate India who invest in the US economy and create jobs there, it should hardly come as a surprise given to the steady tightening of the screws of US immigration paradigm during the final month of Trump's administration. Even in April 2020, the White House announced that it would be suspending the issuance of the green card effectively halting legal immigration into US. In June 2020, the immigration crackdown uh, was extended via an order to stop processing new visa across several skilled worker categories, including H-1B visas, while the latest order to avoid the language of uh, an outright ban of foreign workers joining the federal government contracts. It calls for a review of contracting and hiring practices by the federal agencies with a focus on the foreign temporary workers and U.S. government-related services that were offshored to foreign countries. To an extent, it is understandable that the weight of performance expectation that reset upon Mr. Trump's shoulder is the immense magnitude. The economy, which uh, was in the fine fettle until the COVID-19 pandemic struck, appears to be grinning to a halt with an expected surge in unemployment and numbers nearly 18 million jobless people. So de to describe the US government's response to the pandemic crisis as a tepid, a bumbling and a wrong-headed uh, would be generous. There is a high possibility that the voters may punish Mr. Trump on November 3rd, 2020. However, instead of striking a positive note about the findings of US greatest source of economic resilience in the diversity of its people, Mr. Trump had steadily retreated deeper into the morass of the hateful troops about immigration stealing jobs. This may well uh, strike a chord with his core support base of blue collar workers across middle America who are undeniably in economic pain, but it uh, does not. It does little to repair the damage done since 2016 uh, to the fabric of American society. So bitter polarization is a perennial trait of the political landscape of US but it had rarely even ever been as exaggerated as in the last four years. This is regarding Mr. Trump, how he is again uh, taking down uh, curtailing the H-1B visas of uh, other nations. Uh, language of Unity, this article is regarding the National Education Policy 2020 and uh, regarding the language of unity. States must be allowed to follow their own language policy. So by rejecting the three language formula advocated by NEP, that is National Education Policy 2020, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Edapani K. Palanaswamy had only reiterated the state's unwavering, unwavering position on an emotive and political issue. It, its two language policy implemented decades ago after historic agitation against the imposition of Hindi remains non-negotiable for almost the entire political class. Opposition from the state had uh, last year forced the center to amend the draft of NEP and withdrew the proposal to teach Hindi as a third language in the schools in non-Hindi speaking states. Yet in the NEP approved by the cabinet uh, last week, it chose to push the three language formula packaging that it means to promote multilingual uh, multilingualism and national unity. Though the policy uh, said that no language will be imposed on any state, it had expectedly cut no ice with the parties in Tamil Nadu, uh, which have risen in a near unison of uh, to oppose the proposal. In fact, Mr. Palan Swami, citing collective sentiments of uh, the people, noted that the proposal would be saddening and painful and appealed uh, to the Prime Minister to allow states to follow their own language a policy in the states that resisted multiple attempts to impose a Hindi since 1937, political parties are understandably wary of any mandate to impart an additional language in the schools. They fear that uh, this would eventually pave to the uh, way for Hindi to enter into the state through the back door. Since 1985, the state have even refused to allow Jaha Navodhya Vidyalayas to be set up as they teach Hindi. So the two language policy for the Tamil. An English uh, piloted by the Chief Minister C. N. Anadurai in 1968 had uh, thus far worked well in the state. In a liberalized world, more windows uh, to the world are being opened up uh, for the proficient in English, a global language. Uh, the state's significant human resource contribution to ever-expanding IT sector is also attributed to English fluency of it recruits as much as their technical knowledge. There is a counter argument uh, that Tamil Nadu is depriving students of opportunities 
uh, to learn Hindi, Tao Te as a national think, uh, national link language. However, its voluntary learning has ever been uh, restricted, never been restricted, and the growth over the past decades in the number of CBSE schools where the language is taught uh, would bear a testimony to this. So this is regarding the implementation of uh, the three language, but uh, Tamil Nadu government is refusing as it ha want to held uh, as a two language policy. That's the end of article discussion. If you are new to my channel, I request you all to subscribe so that you will not miss any further updates. Thank you. Have a great day.